way. Look at this old truck. I wonder what this is doing here. It looks like it's really old. Maybe something precious is in it. It's kind of shiny and sparkly, but kind of beat up too. Looks like it's been to a war. You know what? I think it has been to a war. And if you look at the stickers, it's been to church camp. It's been to college. I bet if this trunk could talk, it could tell some stories. We love stories. We tell stories all the time as Christian people. And we tell the same stories sometimes again and again. We tell the Christmas story every Christmas. I don't know about you, but at our house, we have to watch the same Christmas movies every single year. And we tell the Easter story. We keep a lot of our stories in books, the really important ones in the books of the Bible, but in other books too. And many times in the church, we keep our stories in boxes or baskets. <clears throat> I'm wondering what story this old trunk can tell us today. You want to find out? All right. Oh, I think I know what story this is. I am so excited. You ever told the story like you're so excited you want to go and tell your friends and you're so excited you get the story mixed up. Sometimes so mixed up is dug in the right name of the right person. That's what this story is like because this story is the story of Santa Claus. The first Santa Claus that all the Santa Clauses come from. But in the beginning, his name was not Santa Claus at all. His name was Nicholas. Nicholas was born in Petara in Turkey, what's now Turkey, it wasn't called that then, in about the year 270. That's a long time ago. It's before you were born. It's before your parents were born. Year 270 is probably before your grandparents were born. That's where it was. He was born to a family who were followers of Jesus and really good parents. And we don't know too many stories about when he was little, but we've heard one. And that said, when Nicholas was a baby, he loved to take a bath. Now, some babies love it, some babies don't. Nicholas did. And one day, a blind man was visiting the family, and when Nicholas was finished with his bath, his mother put him in the lap of the visitor, and Nicholas reached up with his little tiny baby hands, and he touched the man on the eyes, and the man could see. Nicholas's parents knew right then he was going to be somebody special. And he was. It was very sad, but Nicholas's parents died when he was young. And he was raised by his uncle, who was also called Nicholas. And so he was the bishop in Petara. He raised Nicholas and taught him how to be an acolyte and then eventually taught him how to be a priest. When he decided to follow in his uncle's footsteps, he went to the Holy Land to see the places where Jesus had walked. And he lived in a cave in Bethlehem near some monks where they still keep a piece of paper, a document that Nicholas wrote when he was there studying with them. When he came back, he had to go in a boat all the way across the Mediterranean Ocean, get home, and while they were out on the water, a terrible storm blew up. The sailors were terrified because the, the boat was going up and down, and they were sure they were going to die. And they said, Nicholas, we think that you are very close to God. Would you please pray? And he prayed, and the minute they said he lifted his hands in prayer, the wind stopped, and the boat got safely to shore. And ever since that time, sailors have traveled all over the world telling the story of Nicholas in countries that have lots of seaports like Greece and Russia and Britain and Holland. There are many churches built in honor of Nicholas. After he had been back home for a while, he was made the Bishop of Mira. The bishops do a lot of things. Here he is. Bishop of Mira. He's got a hat like, I have a hat like that. This is fancier. 
he took care of the people in that town. In those days, bishops took care of people in one city, not a whole state. So they did many of the same things. They preached, and they did baptisms, and they ordained deacons and priests, and they raised money for the church, and they went to a lot of meetings, lots of meetings. One of the meetings that Nicholas attended was in a town called Nicaea. It was a big, important meeting that the emperor had called because he wanted all the bishops in the world to come and get into agreement about what all Christians should believe. Good luck. There was a priest there named Arius that had really upset people because he had the idea that God existed first and that Jesus came along later. Most of the bishops and priests thought that God and Jesus had always existed together. Nicholas got so, I shouldn't tell you this part, but I'm going to. Nicholas got so angry with Arius that he went up to him at the meeting and boxed his ears. That is not a nice thing to do. Sometimes people are saints, but they still have a cranky side. Nicholas got in a little bit of trouble, but he still signed the document that we know today as the Nicene Creed. Back in Mira, he took care of people, as bishops do, and the people he was most concerned about were the children. You know, he wanted to make sure that every child in his town had a toy to play with. Back in those days, they didn't have internet or video games or iPads. The toys were made of wood. Can you believe that? So Nicholas went to a woodworker in his town and said, if I give you a little something extra, can you turn your scraps into toys for the children? And the man said, sure. And Nicholas would go out at night when people were asleep and drop off toys for the children, leave them on their doorsteps, making sure that everyone had something to play with. Not just small children. He cared about teenagers, too. There was a family that had three daughters. They were older teenagers. In those days, that's about the time girls got married. But these girls didn't have enough money for a wedding. They couldn't do it. And not only was it sad about not getting married, it was sad because in those days, really the only good job for girls was being a wife and mother. The other jobs were not what you wanted your family to do. So Nicholas was really, really worried. He loved to give his money away. He loved to make people's lives better, so he came up with a plan. He got three bags, and he put gold coins in them. And, you know, in those days, they were on the seacoast, and it was warm at night, and people would sleep with the windows open. They didn't have screens. And so Nicholas went over to the house at night and quickly threw the bags. And the coins that were in the bags fell into the shoes that the girls had left under the window so they would air out at night. When they got up in the morning, there was enough gold in their shoes that they could have their weddings and have happy lives. Nicholas was an amazing guy. After a long life of kindness and generosity and taking care of people, Nicholas died on December 6, 343. December 6, is the Feast of Nicholas, because when saints' days are set, we don't set them on the day they're born in this life, we set them on the day they're born into the next life. So on December 6th, around the world, children put out shoes, sometimes socks, hoping that Saint Nicholas will come around and bring them treats. You might do that on Christmas Eve. I don't know. Which brings me to the last part. Remember how I said the sailors took the story of Nicholas to Holland and the people there knew his story? Well, in Holland, the word for St. Nicholas is Sinterklaas. May you have a happy Advent, and may St. Nicholas continue to bless you. <laughs>